So I have a really good nutritionist though. And, um, I trust him a lot and he's, he's a genius. So I, I cut a fair amount of weight, but I believe in the way that he, um, like recovers me from the weight. He's very, mm -hmm. very good. The best I think in the business. Cool. That was on the list. I was saying like, you, you're always shouting him out and, uh, how much, yeah. how much, um, how much of your performances or how much credit do you give them? You know, the nutritionist. It, dude, a lot, a lot. So Good. there's two guys. Uh, Matteo Capodoglio is my nutritionist and he's changed my life, like literally changed my life and my mm -hmm. career. He's a fucking genius. He's just so smart and uh, he's a hard worker. He loves, he loves to win too, which is one thing I really like about him. He's very, very competitive. I love that. Um, he's a doctor of pharmacy, so he knows okay. exactly how like all the supplements that I take affect me. I can call him with any questions about anything having to do with supplements or medications. And he knows. Um, um, and then on top of that, he's a nutritionist. And so he studied for quite a while in Italy and then he came to the States and uh, he just, he just is, has a little bit different way of doing things than anybody else I've ever worked with. Like I get to eat a ton of carbs and pasta and steak and stuff throughout my camp, mm -hmm. even fight week sometimes eating pasta. So he trained in Italy, so yeah. Yeah, he's he's really amazing. And then the other guy is Andy Galpin. And he's um, I believe he's a muscle physiologist, but I'm not sure what his like official degree is in exercise physiology, something like that. But he runs an athletic department at um, UC Fullerton, mm -hmm. and he's just incredible. Uh, Dr. Andy Galpin, I called him first when I lost to Sajara. After my last loss, I called Dr. Andy and um He's the one that hooked me up with Mateo. He gave me a whole new strength and conditioning routine. And that really like kicked things off for me. So it that's was, what's made me an athlete in my later years is those guys. Exactly. Because I'm, I'm trying to put the pieces together. Like, because throughout this growth, you probably eventually, when you lose or you face adversity or difficult fight, you sort of learn as you go what parts you were missing. Is it the technique, you know, was it nutrition or anything? So is it like after the Eubanks fight, was that the first time you started working with um, a nutritionist to that degree or what were you doing before? Uh, before I was out, I was living in Arizona um, when, I, when I trained to fight Sajara and had that camp and then the five, five or six fights before that, um, I was living in Arizona. I didn't really work with a nutritionist. I mean, I had I had people that I had worked with like intermittently, but nobody very serious. Sometimes it was, it would just be like another fighter that I trusted, you know, or, or mm -hmm. another fighter that had a good weight cut. I would just listen to what they had to say and kind of do that, which looking back now, I'm like, Oh, that was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but you know, you, you know, that's how it kind of goes. Like I, I wasn't making a lot of money. I was pretty broke and, and I didn't even I didn't know what I was missing to tell you the truth. I didn't, I didn't think to myself like, Oh, I lost this fight. I need a nutritionist. Um, I didn't like that. I hadn't put that together. I lost that fight with Sajara. I was really unhappy. I think I, I had gone like two and four in my last six. Um, my confidence was like at an all time low. I felt at it. I felt like I was old or something. I just didn't know what the problem was. And so I called, um, I called Andy who I'd never met. I didn't know who he was. My husband had met him one time and my husband said, Lauren, you need to call this guy. He can help you. And, um, so I called Andy. I didn't have any idea who he was, but I, uh, he said he was like a doctor and that, you know, he would, he had worked with a lot of high level fighters and he said, well, I wanted to, Oh, I remember now I wanted to go on a, um, intermittent fasting diet. I thought maybe that would fix it. I didn't know. And so I said, Hey, I want to do intermittent <laughs> fast. What do you think? And he said, well, what problem are you trying to fix? And I said, well, I guess I never thought about it that way, but I thought about it for a while. I said, I get really tired when I wrestle or when I have to do anything explosive, I get really tired. And I know that sounds stupid because of course you get tired, but in MMA, that's all we do is we're explosive all the time. And so he's, he, we talked for, for a bit and he said, you know what? I don't think that you're getting old. I told him I'd only been an athlete for about eight or nine years and he couldn't believe it. He said, you never played a sport growing up. I said, no, I never played a sport growing up. He said, this is incredible. He said, yeah, that, is actually, that is actually crazy when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he said, Athletically, you're very young. And, um, I told him that I'd only been training about four years when I got into the UFC and he was like, it, like his mind was blown. And so he said, listen, 
there's not a problem here. He said, what you need to do is you need to fix your diet because you're carb dependent, which I had no idea what that meant. And then mm -hmm. he said, and you need to change your strength and conditioning routine. Those two things. And I said, that's it. Cause I could do that. That's totally doable. You know, you're not asking me to grow taller or have different genetics or something like no, those no. are two things. Roll. And he said, yeah, I said, I got a guy for you. Um, you can call Mateo Cappadoglio. He's going to help you with your diet. And so I called Mateo. I was one of Mateo's first clients in the U S and um, we, me, Andy and Mateo worked together for about a year before I fought again, because I had a foot injury. And mm -hmm. in that year, those guys changed my life. They changed everything. Were you always this aware of, you know, of yourself and what to, what to change in your life? Like what things were, were wrong or at least the ability to recognize that something is up and I need to change it. Yeah. I knew something needed to change. because I was yeah. eight and oh, and then I got to the UFC. I went two and four and I mm -hmm. felt bad. Like I, I didn't know what the problem was, but I knew that I felt old, tired. I felt worn out a lot. But at least was, there was the fact that you, you know, uh, knew you had that in you because maybe other people would say, um, oh, okay, I'm in the best, the highest level organization in the world. Uh, the competition is just better. Maybe I'm just not good enough. But you knew, at least you knew you could beat these people. I was hoping, yeah. <laughs> yeah. More I hoping than... But that's why I called Andy, because maybe Andy would have told me, you know, yeah, you're just kind of old, age catching up to you. But And that's kind of almost what I was expecting. But he said, no, you're not old. He said, don't tell yourself that. He was like, you've only been an athlete for eight years. He said, generally, yeah. athletes have 10 years at the highest level. He said, you haven't even been at the highest level for that long, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, the things about fixing my strength and conditioning program and changing my diet um, you know, I thought I was eating healthy, but I, I was eating all the wrong shit at all the wrong times and wasn't eating that, that as well as I thought, you know, anyway, yeah. if I, I think those two things has just changed everything for me. And it's, it's really incredible. So I started feeling a lot better. And then, um, around the same time, just by chance, I went to Texas. I left Arizona and I went to Texas to go train with Montana De La Rosa, who's also mm -hmm. a UFC flyweight. We had met on the ultimate fighter. So she called me and she said, we come be a sparring partner for my camp. I said, yeah. So I, I went out there and I loved it. I loved Texas. I, I met uh, Bob Perez out there. He was cornering her for that fight. And so I met him and just hit it off. We got along really, really well. And so I said, you know what? I think we need to move to Texas. Uh, my old coach was out there. Um, I wanted to work with Bob. So it just seemed like all signs were pointing to Texas. And that was the yep. other thing that changed everything for me. You know, working with a team that I have the best team in the world now. I'm convinced. Awesome. Yeah. And and now you were you were training with Dean Thomas and that's in St. Louis. Um, how much of, because um, there's always, uh, people can be on the fence about whether, you know, sh should I change teams or should I, do my jujitsu here and then my striking there, or, you know, um, how much of it is, um, are you more aware now about where to pick and choose, you know, your training? Mm, yeah. To add to your weaknesses or, you know, improve your strengths? Kind of. So, um, like going out and training with Dean and Jillian, that was just like, cause Jillian and I know each other from tough. And so we Jillian had talked is a top uh, level grappler. Um, yeah. just so she's for a people who don't know she's, yeah, <laughs> she's way up there. Yeah. yeah, she's really, really amazing. She's a very, very good grappler. Mm -hmm. And um, Dean's obviously very well known for being a great coach. And um, and just I've seen I've watched Jillian since we were on tough. I just I just love her. So it wasn't like a big deal to go out there and train with them for a week. And it's always good to have another set of eyes on you so that that, you know, Dean can give me some advice or some direction. But I got to pick his brain a little bit about some habits yeah. that I stuff so that it was really cool and then come back to um come back to houston with my team and my coaches and out here i train at a lot of different gyms i train at like four or five different gyms out here and uh i, I love it i feel like i'm getting the best of everything okay nice because yeah I, i come uh i grew up in jordan in the middle east and now mm. there's a lot of fighters like if people are opening up to it more as a profession there's a lot of talent coming out of there a lot of talent coming out of there but i i think there's People struggle in figuring out whether they have to leave the country. Um, but then again, you know, if you don't have money, maybe you can't. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah. What I mean, what, what advice would you have to someone trying to make it out of Jordan where, you know, there's training, but there isn't really maybe that network of fighters that you can just, you know, go talk to uh, at that level? 
I've never been to Jordan, so it's hard to say. Mm. Mostly what I tell people when they start MMA is find a team you trust and be consistent, you know? So just that's normally the advice I give to everybody, but I don't know because I've never been to Jordan. So I don't think about like, you know, moving there, but um, <clears throat> Yeah, my, as I've grown in the sport, I think the team around me has gotten better and better. It takes a while, you know, mm. and I, I, I've tried to surround myself with the best throughout my career. And um, like, I, I just think the bar has gotten raised higher and higher and higher as I've gotten to a higher and higher level, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel very confident in the team I have around me now. And then you're, yeah, so it, ta it takes you... Um... It's, it's like with um, exercising or training your conditioning um, where like the the barrier or the limit that you can reach like where you would get tired once you break through that you don't drop under a certain level you know what i mean yeah I'm trying to say like yeah maybe now you're at a certain level that you, you won't drop under a certain level you can only improve yeah because of those yeah. little things that you're picking and choosing and adding to it